Hello, you guys. Currently, I'm really stressed out. Uh, I'm trying to hurry up because I have my citizenship exam or naturalization, whatever you want to call it. It's at 11 o'clock, but obviously I want to get there earlier. I don't live really close to that, so it's about a 45 to an hour drive, so off the bat, I need to be there on time and it's currently eight o'clock because i woke up at six but there was issues with my tire and it's just been a really stressful day you know when you have an important day and you're just stressed out about the day and you don't want anything to go wrong because it's already you have so much stress on your mind from what you're gonna do that day and then everything just goes wrong that day well i feel like that's how everything's going right now because this is going to be my citizenship on the line obviously uh nothing is gonna be perfect but you know i plan things accordingly and i have things said and things ready and it's all for nothing because I'm just being thrown these tests and it's just stressful so I went to do something this morning and then on my way back my tire pressure was low I feel like out of all the days you decide to turn on today please give me a break please give me a break so of course I don't know how to change a tire of course I don't know how to not change a tire sorry of course I don't know how to do the tire pressure so I went to a gas station and if you didn't know there's a lot of gas stations that have that thing the air pump whatever you want to call it and it'll pump up your tires well the one that I went to it usually works because I always go there to change the tire pressure it usually always works but again I'm not the one who does it so I go to the gas station and the lady says, oh, I'm sorry, we can't help you with that. You need to go to a tire shop. I I don't have time to go to a tire shop, first of all. So I literally just went around the gas station of people who were there, and I asked them to please help me. And the first guy couldn't help me. That's fine. But the second, uh, the second guy, he uh, came over to where I was, and he tried to help me. We tried to work with that machine. It was not working. Then he said, I'll be right back. I'm like, oh my God, what, what? He said he's gonna go get his tools. So then he comes back with his own air tire pressure machine. And I just, I, like I'm feeling emotional just, just because of that, because he didn't have to help me. And I could tell that we're going somewhere. So I feel like maybe he's late and he decided to help me. And I'm forever grateful to that man. Thank you so much for helping me in my time of need because nobody else wanted to help. And I was so stressed out. You could probably tell that I was stressed out. And I just want to thank you so much for helping me because you didn't have to. And even after the fact that he got his own machine and he, and he was able to help me and fix the problem because he did fix the problem. I wanted to help him. I wanted to thank him by giving him a little bit of money. And he wouldn't accept it. Like, I kept, trust me guys, he, he wouldn't take it. So, bless his heart. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. That is to show that, I know this is not where I'm trying to go with the video about this, but that is to show that this man, he just helped me. And I just feel so so grateful to him and i'm so thankful that he helped me because i don't know what i would have done without him or his little machine because i don't know anybody that has a air tire machine maybe y'all do but i i don't y'all i'm a girl i don't know i don't know anything about cars like that so it's just little angels like that that are being sent to help you in your time of need and i really really appreciate that i almost started crying like not gonna lie, I almost started crying because I just felt like I was being tested. I have no patience, you guys. Especially on stressful days like this. It's such a big step in my life 
to a new chapter that I'm really, really stressed out. There's going to be questions. They're going to ask about my past. Everything is on the line. It's like your whole life is being tested in this one day. So can you imagine of why I am stressed? This is the government, you know, so if you've never dealt with the government officials or anything government related, it, it can be stressful because you have to have all supporting documents. You need to have everything ready. You need to have everything ready. That they, they they say what you didn't have ready, but you never know. My mom always taught me to always bring extra, extra paper. So if they ever ask you for something that's not on that paper, then you can be ready. Because you need to be ready. Like I said, this is going to test your whole life, basically. You're supposed to only go back five years. Those five years uh, from whenever you submitted your form. That's a whole nother topic because I submitted my form almost two years ago and it took them two years to finally give me an appointment and see me. That is insane to say the least. I'm not going to say anything else, but insane. It is insane that it takes two years for me to get a interview to get my citizenship. I'm just glad we're here today because let me tell you guys the BS I had to go through. So... Initially, I had been waiting a year and four months. And then I got an alert and an email saying that they finally scheduled an interview for me. And I was so happy. They gave me this date. I believe it was in July or June of this year. They gave me this date and I was so, so happy. And so I started studying and reviewing all my documents, getting all the documents ready, everything that you needed to have for the interview. Okay. I had so many months before that, so I started studying like crazy, and I was studying every day, and just reviewed everything, had all the documents. My main thing is the documents and to study the civics exam. I had decided, okay, this is a big thing in my life, right? Well, I'm going to get pretty. I'm going to do my nail. I'm going to do my eyebrows. I'm going to do my hair. I did all of that the week prior to my interview that was set up for June, right? Well, I get a call, which I didn't pick up because I was at work. I was checking my emails later on that day at work. I get an email from the government saying that they canceled my appointment for tomorrow because it was a day away uh we're sorry we had to cancel your appointment for tomorrow blah, blah, blah. i was so infuriated i called them back right away and then i got a hold of a officer and they said this is this is dead dead serious what they said we're sorry we're gonna have to cancel your appointment for tomorrow because we have a big event that we need all of the workers to be a part of and we need them to help and i'm thinking in my head you are full of because there's no way if you have a big event if you have a big event for whenever you have a big event you plan everything accordingly so when you plan an event it's always months in advance or weeks in advance so if that was the case then you should have called me months ago or weeks ago to tell me and i checked too there was no other calls from them so just before you say that and I didn't get any prior emails either. So if that was the case, they could have at least emailed me prior to that and said, hey, we're going to have to reschedule your appointment. Till this day, I'm so mad about that. I'm so mad about that. But I'm going to let it go because today is my interview. September. And then I asked, when would the new interview be uh, set up? And they said, we're going to have to... You'll know whenever we send you a letter again. Because they always send you a letter to the, the, the address that you provided on your form. And they'll send you that new letter. Well, when I check on the website, guess what it says? Because you can check on the website too to view your case. And that's where you would have submitted your documentation and your whole interview, your whole process of becoming a citizen, basically. So, when I check online, it says pending new appointment approximately nine months. When I started crying because I had gotten all pretty and this and that a third, just to have my appointment tomorrow. And I had been studying my butt off. My butt off. I was so, so ready. I knew the questions by heart. I knew everything. And I was so, so ready. After that, I just waited and waited and waited. And I w had been waiting months. And I just decided, I'm going to call that number. There's a number that you can reach to talk about cases and stuff like that. I'll talk a little more about that and how you can get a hold of an actual person instead of the bot. Because I was having that issue as well. So I'll let you guys in on that little secret later so 
I finally got a hold of somebody and the nice gentleman, the nice officer I talked to, he said that I should be receiving a letter soon. And that wasn't af that wasn't too long after uh, they had told me to wait. So it was like probably at the end of that same month, at the end of June, that I was calling to ask about my case. And he said, if you don't receive a letter by the end of this month, then please give us a call back. And I had been waiting three months at this point and nothing happened. So I was really upset. Then a month goes by. Something just told me to check the website. I don't know. And I checked the documents and status. And even on the status, it still says, says till this day, uh, pending nine months. It does still say that. So now I know that I really don't count on that because that is just, I guess, like an estimate to just cover themselves just in case it does take longer than expected. Well, for me, it took even longer than nine months because they said nine months when I initially did my paperwork, which was about two years ago, like I told you. And it said approximately nine months and it's been two years later. I went on the website and it finally said that I did have an appointment and I could print there on the website. You can either print that letter that gives you the official, it's like the official appointment letter that you need to bring to your appointment. On the letter, it says that if you lose the letter that was sent to you in the mail, you can also use the letter on the website, just print it out. Just make sure you take the letter with you to your appointment. It's very official and formal, guys. This is your citizenship. This is the title of I am American now, okay? Basically, is what I'm trying to tell you. This is very important that you look the part. You don't want to be wearing flip-flops. You don't want to be wearing a tank top. This is not the strip club, please. Come accordingly. Don't wear all that clown makeup, blue, pink, purple. Um, please don't do that. Got my grandfather's watch for good luck that was passed down from my mom to me. So I can have him with me while I do the interview. All right, you guys, I finally made it. I'm here. It is currently 9.51. Starting with the paper, the little confirmation letter you get. I am bringing all of this. This is all my documentation and proof that I'm gonna bring in here. I Yes, I am going to bring this with me. I don't care if you think I'm being dramatic. You need to be ready. I brought originals of a bunch of things, copies of things, proof of employment, proof of enrollment for college, all my taxes from the last five years, uh, the N-400, the I-797, all that good stuff. So definitely bring your passport let me read let me read you guys the little letter so you get your own letter this is the letter I'm not gonna show you guys the front but this is the letter that you get you need to bring this and it says the date and the time that you need to show up it says at 11 10 a.m. so this is what it says you need to failure to appear for scheduled appointment without prior notification and without good cause may result in denial so you would have to do it all over again and pay the that whole application fee again uh, that's a whole nother it's a lot of money but if you're under quarantine that's okay just call the number that they provided there and then be scheduled do not arrive more than 15 minutes prior to your appointment time so they don't want you to get here early you can't get here early but you're gonna be waiting in your car because they're not gonna let you in until 15 minutes to your appointment so it says 11 10 a.m. they'll probably let me in at 11 I mean at 10 50 or 11 the earliest check the website the cdc.gov website for any covid news and stuff like that i don't know if i have to wear a mask i'll see in there and update you guys afterwards if you don't speak english you need to bring a translator but you should come by yourself otherwise you must bring the following this letter your alien registration card aka your green card any evidence of selective service registration now i didn't know what that meant it's basically if you have enrolled to be part of the military if you guys if for some reason the united states is called to go to war you will be joined your passport and any other documents you used in connection with any entries into the united states if you're applying for naturalization as the spouse and then there's other stuff as well so read this read the whole thing let's go over the civics questions they will ask you 10 verbal questions and you need to answer six of them right on the website you can either pick from the 2008 civics test or the 2010 i believe there's two versions so i don't know obviously i haven't taken it i'm still here i don't know if they ask you which version you want to take or they or you just have to say it and then they'll provide you that but the one that i will be 
asking for or if they ask me I want the 2008 civics test just review the 2008 one and the other one and see which one you like you can download it uh, you can download that information on the United the US Citizenship and Immigration Services website USCIS.gov okay here are the questions lovely lovely I have marked it up because there are some questions that apply to your state I currently live in Houston Texas so a lot of these answers not a lot but some of these answers that you guys will see will be based on Texas review these questions make sure you have these memorized by heart for example the, these were the questions I was referring to who is one of your state's US senators now for me, it is Ted Cruz because he is the senator of Texas, one of them at least. Name your U.S. representative. U.S. representative is Dan Crenshaw as of the year 2021. Name of the president right now, Joe Biden. Vice President, Kamala Harris. What is the capital of your state? Of course, your state that you are currently living in. I live in Texas, so it's Austin. All those little questions will change regarding the year make sure you google that and if you want to be super super safe and make sure you got it right be sure to check out youtube videos where there will be people asking these questions and answering the questions as well so you can practice make sure that besides you practicing this by yourself that you practice this with somebody else as well verbally because they will ask you this verbally it is not a multiple choice exam or anything like that is the verbal 100% verbal so if you don't know anything you're screwed trust me the first time that I reviewed this for a long time I was studying this by myself and I thought I had it down but when somebody asked me some questions I found myself second guessing myself or being like uh, I don't remember that question but it's because you for one I studied them in order and for two I feel like it sounds different in your head but when you hear from someone else's mouth you need to you know taking the information that they're asking you and they think because they are i will say this there are a couple of tricky questions for the most part this civics test is pretty self-explanatory very easy i would say but there is three four questions that kind of get me even right now so i will definitely keep studying a little more before this uh interview and i'll catch you guys afterwards wish me luck fingers crossed so i did get accepted to become an american citizen so i'm really happy about that so let me just share the documents that i had ready and all that stuff after i did my citizenship interview with the officer he gave me a letter that says naturalization interview results the person that does the interview should be telling you if you passed or if you failed in this case i passed and he told me that i passed and then he also gave me this form the n652 form that says you pass the English test and the U.S. history and government test. And then after that, on the bottom it says you can choose A or B. A means you passed. B means you did not. It says congratulations. Your application has been recommended for approval. And so after this, I'm not sure if you keep this letter or what you can do with it. But just keep it because, you know, it's an official government letter. So you never know. I would suggest make a copy of it just in case. He said that I would be getting a letter in the mail in about a month or so. Uh, I still haven't gotten it, just to be honest with you guys. So, like I said, it's only been about two, three weeks, so I should be getting it pretty soon. Or check online where your case status is shown, and then that's where you can see the updates of where everything is. A lot of the documents that I had, I had my work letter, my school letter, like enrollment letter. You need to show how much you're getting paid and all of that. All your taxes from five years ago, you need to have that ready just in case they ask for it. If you're married, they're gonna ask you more questions about that, your marriage license, etc. I'm obviously not gonna include everything that you need because everybody's case is different, but just make sure whenever you get that letter, that letter that they told you, yeah, you need to come in, you need to bring that letter to the appointment, Yes, that letter has a little scanner, so you need to bring that. Make sure you check off everything that they ask you to bring. Basically, what you need to bring is everything that you provided online. You need to bring all the documents that you put inside of that application, if that makes sense. Bring all the proof, bring everything, bring everything. Above and beyond, bring everything. Bring your birth certificate. Listen, bring everything. <laughs> bring everything. You never know, okay? Better be safe than sorry. Have extra documents. Make copies. All that good stuff. Fortunately for me, my officer didn't ask me too many questions, but I know and I've heard from other people that they do ask a lot of questions. That's why I wanted to be prepared and had a lot of documents, but 
my officer was really really nice and he didn't really ask for too many things i was more nervous for that part of the interview than the question part of the interview because i knew that they only ask 10 questions out of the 100 questions that like you need to get six right if you do not get six right he will continue asking up until 10 questions if you don't get those right i believe i think don't quote me on this if you get the rest of well just like how on the paper here it says that i passed all my sections i think how would be is okay let's say you didn't pass the 10 the six questions that they asked you can maybe still get approved for the actually i don't know i don't want to speak a lot i don't know like i don't know if if you didn't pass the the questions and the reading questions if you don't even get to be asked about other i don't know so i'm not sure on how that works but i think i read that if you do fail the questions you can come back and take it another time so you get two chances and after that i believe it's from scratch and y'all know that's a lot of money so please guys please come prepared make sure you know all the 100 questions by heart because you don't know which ones are, they will ask you now if you are 65 or older there are stars on the questions that say the specific questions that you need to memorize it's not all 100 it's less than 100 so that's good for you guys Keep that in mind. And there's also, I think I already touched on this, there's also a 2008 and a 2010, I believe, of civics test. So you have to see which one you want to take. Now getting into the actual interview, my interview, my personal experience. So I got in there, I sat down, and he right away, kid you not, he right away started asking me the 10 questions. I was nervous, yes, but I remember how everything went because I'm never going to forget this. He just said, what is... Oh, who is the father of our constitution? Like, he just started asking me the questions. He didn't even, I sat down and he just started asking me the questions. He didn't even, <laughs> he didn't even introduce himself. Hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do the civics test now. No, it was like, let's do this. Okay, I don't mind, but I was like, uh-huh. Okay, the first question, I am serious, guys. I have been studying these questions like every single day so when he asked me the first question i don't know if you guys can relate but whenever he asked me the first question i have been studying the question so hard that i already knew the answer and without thinking i just said the answer and luckily that was right but like after that first question i realized what did i just do i just answered a question without even thinking about it because you should think before you speak just be sure relax you finally made it here you got this oh before i sorry i know i'm a little scattered but before we actually get into the interview here's to how the entrance process is in houston the office in the letter it says that you need to come 15 minutes prior to the appointment that's when they'll let you in if you come 30 minutes before and try to get in the building they're not gonna let you in this is because of covid and other safety reasons i believe so do not come in there 30 minutes before think you're gonna go in there no I know you're stressed out. I know you want to get there on time. Just get there on time. Wait in your car like I did, as you guys saw. Wait in your car and practice a little bit. Just breathe. Make sure, please, please, please make sure that you do not have any weapons in your purse. That includes pepper spray, a knife, pocket knife, any of that stuff. They don't allow that, okay? Leave that in your car because they will either tell you to take it back or throw it away. I brought my purse. I brought my little accordion you guys saw with all the documents. I was over prepared i don't care it's better to be over prepared than not be prepared they check you there's a security at the bars i, I can't remember what they're called but the security check basically like the airport the attire i decided to wear something casual but serious if that makes sense you don't want to wear flip-flops and it doesn't say that you don't have to but it just seems like if you're going to there what do you go to the beach after that you need to take this serious okay so dress accordingly i passed checkpoint i walked in the first thing i needed to show was my letter because even before i get in the building there's an officer outside and he asked for my letter so after that just keep the letter don't put it up keep the letter with you because once you pass checkpoint you're going to need to show that letter again and they're going to scan the barcode and then they'll give you a number and when i tell you that friday i guess there was not a lot of people there when i tell you i got my little ticket that says what number i'm going to be I, I got my ticket and I went to go sit down and they call a number right away. That number that they call you for first, that ticket is for pictures. For your passport picture, I believe. They take your pictures and then you go sit down. They write another number in the letter that you provided to them. They write a, they write a number and they tell you, call, listen for this number and then this number. After that, I sat down. 
I went to the bathroom real quick. I, I did everything quick because I just realized there wasn't a lot of people there. And you never know. You get called in and you're in the bathroom. That's not acceptable. You need to be ready. About five minutes later, they already called my name. You go into a separate door. And it's more serious. My my guy was all the way in the back. So I kept walking for a long time. And then we finally got to his office. And that, that's where everything started. After he asked me the six questions, which I got all right, he said, you passed the civics test. There was an iPad on, on there. And he asked me, can you read what's on the screen? Can you write what I'm saying? He verbally said something. I need to write it down. That was pretty easy. It was just one of each. He said, read this one time. Write this one time. And that was that. And that's how I passed all three sections. When I first got in there, I asked him, where should I put my purse? Because, I mean, I don't know if people cheat or what. But he said, don't worry about it. I guess they just they just kind of look at you and make sure that you're not cheating. And so then when on the personal question, he asked me what my full legal name was. He asked me, where have I traveled in the past five years? And that one I had a little trouble with, not gonna lie, because who's gonna remember what they what, what they traveled for in the past five years? That kind of messed up a little bit on that, but he understood and he let that one slide. But I suggest you memorize the dates because you might not get a nice officer like I did. He asked me for my employment card and then he asked me for how much I get paid at my job and I printed this letter out from my workplace. And when I provided this letter, there was something wrong in the letter. I did not manually write anything down in that letter. I just printed it out for my workplace. And they, my workplace has that letter messed up. It has said that I get paid this amount every three months. And he was like, you get paid this amount every three months. And I was like, no. He let that one go as well. And I let him know that I didn't write anything. That was just something that I printed out from my workplace. Just make sure you read over your documents. And even though this was not my fault, just be careful. Read everything that you get from your workplace or college. That was really it. Like, it was really smooth and quick. I believe I was in there for about 15 to 20 minutes. And after we... He asked me those questions and he just decided, okay, you're good to go. I, I recommended you for the citizenship you passed. And then that's when I started crying. I did. I started crying and I was just really happy because this means I can now see my family. I had been waiting for a long time for this interview and it finally happened and I passed. So yes, I was really, really happy. Before I finish this video, I wanted to share with you guys the number that you should contact once you call that number and how you're going to get past the bot. So if you want to speak to a USCIS agent, when you call that number, I don't know if that number is for everybody across the states or not. So I'm not going to give you the number. You can just Google USCIA government. I'm pretty sure it's on the website. So just contact the number that's on that website. When you call them and they try to get you to talk to this freaking robot and you cannot pass this robot. I'm telling you, you cannot pass that robot. It, it's just going to keep talking to you forever. No, we don't want to talk to robots. We want to talk to humans. So what you're going to do is when the robot asks you what you're calling about, you're going to say, this is all you're going to say, nothing more. You're going to say this word. You're going to say info pass, info pass. That's all you're going to say. And that they will say, okay, we'll get you to the right agent or whatever. And then it'll ask you, are you the person? I think it tells, it asks you, are you the person who's applying for the citizenship? Or are you somebody who's helping that person? Translator. And then you just say what type of person you are. I was on the phone waiting for them to pick up my call for 45 minutes one time. If I were you, I would call as soon as they're available. I don't know if they're 24 hours. And good luck to you guys. I hope this video was helpful. And good luck to all my future citizens study. It's actually been about a week since we last spoke i was gonna leave the video at that i actually got my old ceremony letter in the mail a couple days after that so i wanted to continue the video so the notice of naturalization old ceremony that's what it's called they give you the date where you're supposed to appear in the time and the location as well and it gives you a guideline to follow just like the appointment letter does so the same things apply for this one you must appear for the appointment unless you're under quarantine you call the number that they provide on the letter if you need to reschedule do not arrive more than 30 minutes prior to your appointment. You may have to answer health screening questions before entering. And it says bring a black or blue ink pen with you to your appointment. And it said that for my other appointment, I did bring one that time as well, but I never needed it because it was just given to me. So I'm bringing it just in case. You may be limited who may attempt your appointment with you. 
you don't if you don't speak English, bring the translator person there with you. They do ask you at the end of this letter to dress properly if you cannot come to the ceremony for any reason other than besides COVID. Then return this notice immediately with a written explanation on why you cannot attend to the office. It's really self-explanatory, straightforward. You need to bring all your permanent resident cards, green cards that you may have, whether they're expired or not. You need to bring all of them. If you have more than one, bring all of them. All re-entry permits or refugee travel documents that you may have valid or expired. And any other documents USCIS issued to you that you may have, such as an employee authorization card, valid or expired. Italy, Jamaica, Japan, Jordan, Kazakhstan, Kenya, South Korea, Laos, Lebanon, Liberia, Libya, Lithuania, Malaysia, Mexico. So the appointment card for the old ceremony was at 7 o'clock. I believe you were supposed to be there at 7. But since the state that I'm in has a lot of people, I did get there at 7, but the traffic was so, so bad that the ceremony didn't start until 9 o'clock. They let me in, but unfortunately no uh, parents or companions were allowed. Nobody, not your mom, nobody. Unless they needed you for translation or any of those purposes, a uh, handicap or something like that where you need somebody else with you. Only the people that were becoming citizens. Remember I told you guys you need to bring your old green cards. You need to bring that with you, otherwise they will not give you your certificate. And they'll ask you, if you forget, they'll ask you, can, can somebody else come drop it off? Because you have two hours. They're gonna take it away from you, so I don't know if you wanna take a picture from memory, say goodbye to them, that's what I did. I mean, it's like, it's a journey. Then at nine, boom, it starts. There is a jury, I believe. The juror comes and he speaks and he talks about the oath and how important it is and then you swear under oath and do all the stuff. That thing, do you guys want to guess how long it took? I was there until 11 o'clock. I think we left at 12. Pretty sure we left at 12 because it ended at 11 technically, but then you had to go make another line to leave and get your certificate. And you had to make sure there, you had to talk to an officer, make sure that the certificate was correct. And if it wasn't correct, you were supposed to tell them right then and there so they could fix it. Otherwise, if there was an error that you caught after you left the building, that's on you. You need to pay that out your pocket. So I was so hungry, but they did have a stand. And I know you guys are gonna think I'm dumb. I thought what they mentioned the food that it was gonna be free, like I thought it was gonna be free. They said there was coffee and donuts, so I thought the donuts and the coffee were free. All the work that we put in here, all the people in this room, all the work that we put in to become a citizen and we can't even get a free donut? Like, I don't know, that's just me. At least they had a water fountain, but that was it. The coffee was not free, the donuts were not free. They had other stuff too, they had uh, snacks and stuff, but you can imagine how expensive that was. And then at the end, you know, you're a citizen and they give you a package and they give you a little flag. They give you a passport form that you can fill out and they, they also tell you that you, you need to change your social security number or update it. The actual social security itself does not change, but you just need to update it. It's been a long journey, but here we are in the end and I am proud of you. 